Hello, Solar Loon here, and this is a development log update video. Um, doing things a little bit differently uh, this time around because, firstly, I've obtained over 10,000. Obtained? That sounds weird. I um, hmm, 10,000 people have subscribed to my channel. So incredible! <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, if you've <laughs> subscribed to me, really do appreciate it. It's uh, it's an honor, and it, it's pretty it's pretty incredible. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so I hope to keep making videos and tutorials and stuff like that. I edit in like confetti shooting on the screen and like uh, confetti sound, but I'm too lazy for that. Um, I spent a few hours today already trying to cut video, and found out that it was just the file that was coming out of my camera that was just like super. Um, slow to seek and to cut in blender so I don't want to cut video okay I just want to get I just want to get this video made and kick it over to YouTube where you can watch it and where hopefully you're watching it now which is the future for me but it's the present for you so that's it's time it's time everybody okay so I don't know let's just get let's just okay so look I, I've been doing this work I've been making this content let's get to it Okay, so this is the project planning software I've been working on for a couple of weeks. Um, another video about that because it's a cool video, because it's cool software. Um, I've done a lot and I think it'd be cool to show you guys. So that's what I am going to do here. It's a lot different. Um, there's icons for tasks now. So these checkbox, ta checkbox tasks, uh, they now have little checkboxes that trigger, they, they get checked when you check them off. Uh, I don't know why... Yeah, for some reason it's not... Oh, okay. There we go. Um, yeah, it's checking off tasks, so that's cool. It's, it's, it's immediate, it looks nice. Um, you can trigger icons on or off, which is nice. Um, you don't have to have them on, you can just choose not to have them on. Nice. Uh, you can also turn off the grid if you want to just be in the inky black darkness of space, which is... Creepy and scary, even in a computer program. No one probably wants grid off. Uh, this is a new ta uh, new theme. This is uh, piano black. I wanted something that's darker because uh, I've been tweaking the colors, and moonlight is now kind of a neutral, neutral uh, blue, uh, which is a nice uh, nice change up. Uh, but if you want something darker, you have dark crimson here, and you also have uh, piano black here. Uh, which is cool. The shadows um, are now soft, or rather can be soft. You have a little spinner that allows you to change the quality, so you have off, you have solid, and you have smooth, which is nice. Uh, if the shadow is lighter, then it turns uh, additive, it turns um, kind of neon. But if the shadow is dark, like in the case of sunlight here, then it's just an ordinary dark shadow. Um, yeah, so sunlight, I've been tweaking the, the themes a little bit, so sunlight's a little bit, um, I feel like a little bit more neutral, possibly, I don't remember. Someone asked for a blueprint theme, I added that theme, because uh, I thought it'd be cool, and it is pretty cool. Um, it's kind of like a, a little bit of a lighter version of Moonlight, uh, which is now kind of a neutral, uh, neutral theme. Um, I, so these icons, back to the icons, I uh, added this checkbox for checkbox tasks, I also added a little ellipsis icon for basically um, indication that there's more information in a task than the first line. So rather than the bracket, dot 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 bracket at the end of the of the uh, text like it used to be, now it's just this nice little icon that says, "Hey, there's something else there." Um, yeah, cool. Uh, I also added deadlines. Um, oh, that's right. I was gonna add this here. Uh, right. Uh, okay, so I'll show this here. I don't love this. Okay, so I'll show this here. Uh, so, yeah, you can check off a task and indicate that it's supposed to have a deadline. And when you do, it'll get this nice little clock icon and say when the task is due. So in this case, it's due in two days. Let me check, uh, change this to a different theme so you can see it a little bit more clearly. Since it's kind of dense. Uh, yeah, so you can see like, oh, it's due in two days. Right? So you have this little clock that indicates that there's a, a deadline task. And as you whoops, as you uh, approach the time that the task is due, which let's say is due today, 
here, you'll see that clock changes to a do icon, and also you get this little uh, pattern in the background, and it also will say do today. So this lets you know, hey, it's due today, try to get it done. Now, if you actually pass the due date, it'll say late, and then you'll have this warning icon in the background of your task, and it'll say oh, also overdue. So that let, lets you know, like, hey, you're late. That's, that's basically it. Hey, you're late. Try to get something, uh, try to do something about that. Um, so that's nice, because that, you know, I, I, before the, um, the do, uh, the, the deadline idea was essentially something like, um, at the top, if you recall, there was a, there was a timeline that was going to be filled up with different days or weeks, uh, and basically the deadline that you specified for the project would be on the right hand side, all, you know, however far away, and it would approach slowly to the left until eventually it reached your tasks. And that let you know, like, oh, you know, your deadline has approached, that kind of thing. But when I thought about it a little bit more, it didn't really make sense because each, like, in a project, you might have different deadlines for different tasks, right? So, for example, you might have a, um, let's say you're making a game and you want to finish it in a month. You might say, well, every week I want to get done 10 maps, 10 levels, right? Uh, so you have four weeks, you have four uh, sets of 10 levels, you have 40 levels. So you might want to have it so, uh, have it done so that basically each week is a deadline where you have to make 10 levels. So in that case, it makes more sense to have four tasks, right? Each task being of 10 levels, and you simply uh, have a deadline of you know week one, week two, week three, week four for each of those each of those. Uh, sets of, of levels, which makes sense. And I'll go into that a little bit more uh, elsewise. Well, actually, I'll go into that now. Um, <laughs> you can change the task type from uh, checkbox to progression, because before there was a progress bar task, now there's a progression task, which makes more sense for development, uh, for projects. Because before it was just a kind of arbitrary progress bar, where it, it just said like, you know, 100% or 0% or 15% or 35% and it went up in 5% increments. Now you could actually implement, uh, um, indicate how much you've done and how much you need to do. So let's say we had a task like complete uh, 10 levels, right? And the deadline for this is let's say uh, a week from now. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, the 18th. Uh, and so we have, let's say, three levels done. Oops. Three levels done of 10. So now when we close this out, we see it's due in one week. The task is, complete, is to complete 10 levels. We have this nice little progress bar icon, and it's about 30% uh, filled. And as we complete more, the progress bar fills up, and then once it's complete, uh, fully complete, this completed on timestamp appears, and we have uh, a full progress bar in the background, as well as a full progress bar icon. So this lets you know it's done. And then also the deadline icon disappears and only appears if it's actually incomplete. Um, yeah, so this is also new, uh, created on and completed on timestamps. That way you can tell, for example, how long you've had a task, uh, when the task was done. Uh, if you said, when, when did I do this? Was it yesterday? Was it last week? Uh, now you have this little bit of I, uh, information as well, which is nice. Um, the something I like uh, about this do label at the end is I'm using a an automatic um, let's see I'm using an automatic package to f format yeah there it is uh, Dura FMT I'm using an automatic package to format uh, times in or durations into days or weeks or whatever and it automatically will basically round times down so in this case it says a week if we say oh it's three more days it'll still say a week uh, so it doesn't have it doesn't give you so much information that you can't really process it like you know three weeks two days and 14 hours no it, it'll just say you've got a few weeks so you know you know time's approaching but you have a general idea a general estimation of how much time it takes um, I believe I can actually customize that to be a little bit more specific, but I think this is fine uh, for my purposes here. Uh, so yeah, because of this uh, deadline system, the um, let's see, the deadline, uh, or rather, the timeline indicator at the top is gone, and now you just have the time, the time, the current time at the bottom. Uh, cool. Something else I added was animated gifs. So now you can add animated uh, gif animations to your uh, project, which is cool. 
So this can be useful if you have a, uh, for example, a player character, you want, like a sprite, you want to go ahead and, and draw on screen, or, or I'm sorry, like a, let's say you have a sprite of a player character or an animation of background that you want to um, have as an idea. Maybe you say, oh, uh, I really like how Chrono Trigger did its character design. And so you might have a GIF of Chrono Trigger, like battle, gameplay, or world, exploration, or whatever, and put that in your project so you can actually have kind of a, a visual reference of this is what the game should feel like, this is what it should look like, this is what the character should look like, I like this animation, or I like this motion. I want to be able to give the user the ability to uh, put that information into uh, their plan, their task board. Um, it's lacking a little bit because the way that the uh, GIF system works, it basically has to load in the frames of animation into memory, but it only does it when you actually display the animation. So it'll be laggy as it first is kind of playing the animation, but once it plays it through, it's nice and smooth. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, it's kind of interesting the way that this rolled out because basically animated GIFs um, aren't supported by Raylib. It'll load the GIF, but only display the first frame of animation. So in order for me to actually add animated GIFs, I had to basically use Golang's um, GIF package to manually load in the frames of animation and then draw them in sequence according to a timer to play them as an animation. And it's a little bit different. It's a, it was an interesting problem to solve and it's uh, a little bit heavier than I'd like, but it is functional and it's uh, fine for now, I believe. Something else I uh, improved upon uh, Actually, if I go back to a progress bar task, you'll notice that in it, before this was like just plus and minus for this kind of a, a, a number spinner, but now you can actually click in there and type in a number if you wanted to uh, enter something, which is cool. Um, actually, now that I think about it, yeah, if, if the number is zero and you start typing, you should probably just like put in that number rather than adding it to the zero. That's, that'd be nice. So I might do that at some point. Uh, something else I, I've done is work on the text box uh, carrot, uh, text box component. So you can type a little bit more easily. Uh, you can paste information into uh, the text box now from your system, your operating system uh, clipboard. Uh, you can also use the arrow keys to navigate. You can use home and in to go to the top and bottom. Uh, you can click. So that's cool. So it's a little bit, a little bit easier to type in the text box. Well, it's a lot easier. So yeah, it's a lot more, uh, a lot more functional, a lot better to type things into the text box, and it's uh, definitely shaping up. What else? Um, that's basically it. That's base. That's basically it. That's ba That's yeah. I'll call that it, it, it. I've done other things, but that's kind of just like you know stuff on the back end, just kind of make this stuff work. Uh, I've optimized it a little bit in that um, it doesn't. The um, master plan doesn't display anything. It doesn't render anything that's not visible, which is cool. Um, yeah, just minor things here and there. Yeah, minor things here and there. Something that I would like to add uh, that's actually mentioned in one of these tasks somewhere is basically a task that allows you to plan out shapes. I think that would be really useful. Like uh, if you, let's say you're playing out a game like Zelda or Metroid and you wanna, or yeah, that's a good example, like Zelda or Metroid, and you wanna plan out the world or the dungeon, you really probably wanna have a general shape in mind. Maybe not anything specific, but you wanna have like a, oh, it should be shaped like this, and then maybe this is an elevator, and you know, this is maybe like a, a an area that's shaped like this or that, or maybe you have a temple like in Zelda, like a, a dungeon. You say, okay, well, I want to add an image from like, let's say, Egypt, like a pyramid, and from, let's say, uh, India, this kind of Middle Eastern, you know, architecture, and I like this kind of architecture, and you have these kind of images for a reference on your on your planning uh, board, but then also you want to have a floor plan that says like, okay, here's where the key should be, here's where a gate is, here's where maybe you have to find this item or solve this puzzle. And so having the, uh, some sort of tool, some sort of task in Master Plan that allows you to go ahead and uh, plan out the shape of your dungeon, of your area, it seems like it'd be a very useful tool because that would allow you to have a little bit more uh, planning capabilities. Maybe not anything to draw in Master Plan, that feels a little, a little much, 
but I think definitely something that allows you to plan out a general shape uh, would be very useful uh, for planning purposes and for um, visualization purposes. Uh, so you can easily prototype where things are and how things look and where they interact with each other. Uh, but yeah, that's basically what I've done uh, over the past couple of weeks. Uh, definitely shaping up, definitely looking a lot uh, better, I would say, compared to last uh, last time. It wasn't bad looking before, but it definitely looks com a, a lot more complete than it used to. It looks a lot more dense, but not um, overly so. It looks like, you know, there's more information that is there to convey to you the importance of your tasks that you need to do, and yet there's still a ton to do, so uh, this is pretty good. This is what I was talking about. Here we go. Uh, tasks specifically for planning shapes. So yeah, that's, I think that's, that might be one of the things I approach next. Uh, but yeah, this has been fun. This is really good uh, so far, and I feel like it's going to be even better and better uh, the more I use on uh, use this. So hopefully, uh, we'll see a lot more progress in this software. Hopefully, people will continue to uh, watch my channel, and uh, hopefully, this will be out in the next week or so or two. Because uh, really, at this point, it's pretty much done in terms of usability. It's pretty solid. It's not perfect. Uh, I'd like to add backups, I think, before I release it, but at the same time, backups, it, it could be understandable that it comes a little later, so maybe that will come a little later, but um, it's pretty much done at this stage. It's use a usable piece of software. Uh, so I think I am pretty happy with it and ready to release it. Uh, but yeah, I'm hyped. So, <laughs> so thank you very much for uh, watching. This has been a Solar Loon uh, development log video. And uh, if anyone has any questions about how I approach some of these problems or any suggestions, please feel free to make them. I read the comments that people leave, even if I don't reply via comment. Um, I should get back to, to, to replying to people via comment. That's not... Uh, it, it, replying via vid video is okay, but at the same time, I think being, I want to maintain that contact between myself and people who watch me, my subscribers. Uh, so anyway, thank you very much for watching. It's been real. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to continue making stuff and uh, continue to be Solar Moon for quite a while. Alright, thank you very much and uh, I'll catch you guys on the flip side next time. See ya.